Mark. It's so good to see you in person. Well, so you're thank, you. thank you for doing this. Very excited. We're going to have a lot of fun. I hope so. People don't think seeing their brain is fun. No, I'm yeah. intrigued. I can't wait. Let's do it. Well, I'm so excited. It's amazing. I watch her videos and we do look at every organ and appropriately take care of them. But the brain is kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but it does a whole lot. Beauty starts with the brain. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear from you your goal. What do you want? Um, I mean, obviously... I watched my dad have, you know, go through the beginning stages of dementia. He stayed with me the year before he died, and it scared me. Um, I don't know much about, you know, the disease, if it's hereditary. I know a lot of it has to do with, you know, your surroundings and everything. But that was, that's something that really stuck with me, to watch him up close and personal deal with that. And I don't ever... Hey, of course, I don't know if you realize that when you're in it, I don't ever want to be that. But more importantly, I don't want to do that to my family because it was really hard to watch. Um, and also, I've been through a lot of trauma in the last five you know, years that I don't know how it couldn't make a difference in my brain. Because I feel the difference in my body, um, obviously my mind. Um, so... I just want to make sure that where there's no damage there, and if there is, that we're able to reverse it. So tell me about you. Walk me through sort of the story of your life. I mean, Cliff Notes. I was very sheltered my whole life. Married my boss, my first job when I was 16. He was 12 years older than me. We started dating. Um, got married by the time I was 21, had my daughter right away. And, you know, at 28, I woke up and said, I love him, but I'm not in love. You know, I think I just married to get out of the house. I don't think women, you know, again, talking about astrology, I don't think women should get married until they're at least 28 because you have the Saturn return that you really start to understand who you well, are. Well, your brain's not even finished it's developing not. until you're about 25. So making decisions to get married early is you're making it without your brain sort of fully developed. Right. And so you might not make the best decision. I just take, I dive into all spirituality, all religions, and I take what resonates with me and I make it my own. And that's what I call my religion. Um, I'm still a Catholic girl at heart, but I resonate a lot with Judaism. There are different um Buddhist beliefs that I resonate with. So I take it all and I make it my own. But I think the underlining core of it all is kindness and love. And I think man is what distorted a lot of that with religions and practices and, you know, establishments. <laughs> I, I want to know where you grew up and what it was like growing up in your family. My dad had a temper, a oh. bad temper. My grandpa left... Um, you know, when he was younger and he was the youngest boy, but he had to become the breadwinner, and, you know, for the family and started working very young. You know, he told us a funny story the year before he died. Now, every year we get younger and younger. And the last year it was four when he started working. <laughs> <laughs> but he did start working young on the docks and have to provide for his mom, who, from what I understand, she died when I was little, was not very nice um, to him, especially. And uh, he had it rough, you know. I, I tell a story how on my first wedding day, my dad lifted my veil. It was the first time he told me he loved me. And I was kind of taken back. I knew he loved me. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm not loved. I knew he loved me, but he never said the words. And in that moment, all I could think about is like, I wonder if his parents ever told him. Like, I was just felt so bad that he, it took him that long to say it, you know. Very old fashioned. We were, the women were bred to be great wives and the boys were bred to be, you know, workers. And growing up, it sounds like your house was a bit stressful and unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, or predictable in that it would be stressful. I always forgave him for being the nut that he was. And I think my mom didn't like that a lot. I just understood he was broken, you know. Yeah. So you have a forgiving heart. Yeah, almost too. Like a lot of my therapists say, like, why don't you get angry? You're allowed to be angry at him. 
But I understand why he was the way he was, you know? He was raised by wolves in a way, like he didn't understand love and emotional intelligence. So I had compassion for the way he was. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sort of a fan of forgiveness. Yeah. Tell me about television. How did that come into your life? So I was the first one of the Housewives series to actually quit and leave. Um, That's and then, a sign of intelligent life. Yeah, I thought my piece was more important than any, you know, I'm not really- Fame is such a trap. It really is, and I've seen it firsthand how much it changes people. And again, it's nothing I was craving. I'm not driven by it. Um, I appreciate it especially with my social media following because they've stayed with me all these years and I feel like we're growing together spiritually because I share everything that I'm learning. And, um, you know, the people who watch the show and resonated with me did for a reason. And I feel like we're still on this, this thing together. And, you know, I love Bravo, but I feel like the people who really love the chaos and the hair pulling and everything are the people who need to hear this stuff the most because why are you liking that kind of chaos and discord like is it something you're used to maybe we could change that you know <laughs> so yeah so I fell into it I quit I went and worked for HGTV for a few years doing what I love had a design show in there um, I loved it um, it was a lot of work but I love designing it's you know my food creating and um, then they asked me to come back and I went back to Bravo for one more year. And uh, that was 2014. And then we wrapped up and I moved to California. Can you talk about the assault? In 2017, my husband and I, my current husband and I were in New Jersey for an event. And we came home to two men in our house who assaulted us and um, zip tied us together. Um, I mean, obviously an event like that is tragic in so many ways, but I have physical injuries, emotional in injuries, lingering fear. Um, and I thought I was gonna die at one point. So I kind of had a near death experience where I kind of went through my whole life in a moment, which was a very beautiful moment, oddly enough. It was the most peace I've ever felt. Hmm. Um, but it was a moment where we were tied together and I thought they were just going to shoot us. So I had a moment of just kind of being proud of myself for my accomplishments through my life and grateful to understand true love, my husband Dave, because up until that point, I don't think I did. And I just prayed for my daughter that she would be okay. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. And then they left, <laughs> and I was left with that. So that's a lot to have that moment. How long was the whole... Gosh, I don't even know. I don't even know how long it lasted. For me, it was an eternity, but I'm sure it was just a few minutes. There's so many layers to the trauma, because not only is what happened um, physically, but emotionally being so sensitive to begin with, but also the emotional part of who was arrested because of it and the healing that I have to do for that. We did spec scans. Here's an example of a healthy scan and either rest or concentration. So the image on the left, what we wanna see is full, even symmetrical activity. The color doesn't matter, it's the shape. The image on the right, blue is average activity. Red and white are the most active parts of the brain, which should be here. This is an area called the cerebellum. It's got half the brain's neurons. It's involved in coordination, but also thought coordination and learning. So it's important we look at that for you. When I look at your scan, so the one on the left, this is at rest. So you said you were an empath. We see this, your emotional brain. It's pretty lit up. And you've had a lot of EMDR. And so that can still cause you to struggle with some anxiety, some darkness. 
cerebellum's a little sleepy. And when you concentrate, it sort of gets sleepier still. Um, but the most important thing I see is your emotional brain's really busy. And that can be from childhood, where you're always having to watch because you never know when your dad's going to be unreasonable and when things can get frightening. Um, and then the assault clearly can fire this up. And this is a little on the bumpy side. That's why I said it, there's looks like some toxicity okay. that I worry about. And, um, and it's a little worse when you concentrate. And the bumpiness, you don't drink, you're not doing drugs. Um, anesthesia can do it. And a lot of people just, they don't know. Yeah. And you had long surgery. Yeah. So if you think the trauma, physical trauma, the emotional trauma doesn't help either. That sort of chronic state of fear, fight or flight um, hormones are raging, if you will, that shrinks that area. Um, and then the anesthesia on top of it, maybe mold on top of it. Oh gosh. So, so I always think of things stack. Yeah. And, Everybody's got stuff, right? Nobody gets out of life without stuff. Let's fix it. So our plan, mm -hmm. uh, I think hyperbaric oxygen, I love it. It's so helpful. I see it because it often increases blood flow to the brain. I think more MDR would be really helpful to get triggered less. Yeah. Um, and every time you get triggered, I want you to be a detective and go, so what's that connected to? I don't want you to avoid the pain. I want you to sort of let's start investigating what are the connections. And that's what EMDR is just great. Um, happy saffron boosts your mood, lower your anxiety, even help your memory and libido. This actually has Alzheimer's studies with it. It was very scary to see my dad like that, and I never want to be in that position. Um, and pro biotics uh, help your gut. And people don't know there's a huge gut sure. brain connection. I love it. Cool. Thank you so much. What a joy. Learned so much. Questions? There's a lot more to go. Um, now, I'm very dedicated to making my brain fat.